everyone. Welcome back to another Adobe Live from the Sofa. I'm Hazel. Some of you might know me from streams before. I'm going to be your host today. And I'm joined by the wonderful Lizzie Ryder, aka Indiscoven Prince. And um, who is here today? Uh, let me know. Do we have any of the regulars in? I see Gareth, Jackie, Sandrine, Kirsty, Oliver, Robert. So many of you. Um, and it is advertised as a fresco session, but we are also going to be looking at Photoshop and a tiny bit of Adobe Capture as well. So lots of treats in store today. And we're going to be doing a session on pattern design for face masks. Um, so hopefully you can get some inspiration uh, for your own pattern design and maybe even create your own face masks. And yes, Jackie, all the regulars are here. Lovely. <laughs> to hear from you all again. Uh, so without further ado, I just want to introduce Lizzie Ryder, who is a dear friend of mine, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, we used to work oh. together. And she is an yeah. incredible illustrator and the queen of print. So who better <laughs> uh, oh, to explain print <laughs> than Lizzie? And Tim is saying it's a fantastic frisky fresco Friday brackets and Photoshop. Yeah. Double brackets and Adobe Capture. <laughs> We're gonna try and squeeze a lot into this session. Um, so yeah, Lizzie, do you want to introduce yourself to yes, the okay. Adobe community? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. So again, thank you, Hazel. Um, and oh, sorry, I hope that didn't jog too much. Um, yeah, I know it's, um, it's absolutely wonderful to be here today. Uh, and as Hazel said, I work in surface pattern design. So I create prints that are used um, currently across stationery and um, hopefully some kind of textiles in the future. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of show you what my process is from uh, painting um, by hand all the way to finishing the, the repeat tile on Photoshop. So yeah, it's going to be really good. Oh, amazing. All right. Uh, shall we? jump right into it. Is, do we have yeah. any surface pattern designers here or anyone that's interested uh, in pattern at all? Uh, I'm going to open that question up, up to the audience. And Lizzie, what are you going to work on first? So um, if everyone can see my screen, perfect. Um, this is the print actually that I'm going to show you uh, the, the sort of step by step process of how I put this together. So this was something that started off um, with hand painted elements, uh, which I've actually got right here. I can show you um, if you can kind of oh see that. This, it. These are sort of, yeah, <laughs> little kind of <laughs> mushrooms and foxes. I've gone very autumnal because um, I'm a little bit excited that autumn is just around the corner, uh, as you can probably tell by this print. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll really kind of walk you through um, how I have spent it in, how I edit it, how I then kind of form the repeat tile. So um, yeah, should we should we get going? Shall I? Yes, shall definitely. I Gareth uh, says he's really interested to have a best practice for forming a good repeating pattern. So I think we've both got a couple Great. of different techniques that we'll, we'll show. We do. Yeah. So I should say there are different techniques. You know, there's not just one. This is just my own particular technique. And I wanted to kind of show you what the end result is. So here's a sort of here's one I made earlier earlier. Um, and then um, if we start off here, um, what I'm starting off with is the stage at which I've taken my different elements that are going to form the um, form the pattern and I scanned them in. Um, I use an Epson scanner. Um, I use an A4 one. Um, if you've got the space, you can get a much bigger one as well. But my A4 Epson scanner um, always serves me really well. Um, and so what I've done is I've sort of painted a few different elements. So I started off with a kind of bigger element and some smaller ones. Um, obviously, the joy of um, using uh, Photoshop and Adobe in general is that you can always change the size of these different elements. Um, I am um, looking kind of at my screen here, but um, if you, um, you'll see what I'm working on. Um, and so once I scan those in, um, the main thing really, um, I know this is sort of quite simple, um, is really just to prep the components. So that's the first stage, really. So uh, what I like to do is, um, first of all, I kind of crop the, um, the the page just to kind of get rid of these untidy page lines that have come in. Um, don't worry about Subtle Hedgehog. I decided I didn't like him too much. So. Oh, no. <laughs> so he's <laughs> he's says, out of the print, I'm afraid. Yeah. So these are real watercolour paintings being scanned in. These are real watercolor paintings that have been scanned in. You know, you can of course Amazing. do them digitally, and sometimes I I'll do some digital um, 
components as well as in digital drawing. Um, but largely um, right now I work from watercolor and then I scan them in. Um, one thing I think that's actually quite a good thing to point out is that no matter the color settings on your scanner, I normally find that there needs to be a little bit of adjustment anyway. So I tend to go to adjustments here. Um, I go to saturation um, and I just find that the colors are always um, just a little bit dimmed by my scanner. And so I tend to kind of increase those just a tad until I'm happy with them. So, you know, just by kind of six there for me is enough. But obviously you can, I mean, you can really do whatever you like. You can kind of go as bold or oh, wow. um, as kind of subdued as you like. Um, That's really nice. You've still got the watercolor textures as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I love the sort of natural kind of pooling, swirling kind of textures of watercolour. Um, and um, I actually leave lots of those in. So when it comes to cleaning up the components, which I'll do in a little bit as well. Um, so uh, let me go back to layers. And I'm actually just going to layer those all together um, and merge them because I'm happy with that saturation. And I find it a bit tidier to have them all together. Um, and I'm going to use the healing tool um which is i think my best friend on photoshop really <laughs> and it's <laughs> feel like it, we all have our best our best friends and our quick hacks and everything <laughs> we do absolutely so i think this is great for example if um you know if there's like little uh, flaws that i want to get rid of um as i said you know with watercolor i i kind of really love the natural texture so i'm not going to be getting rid of any of this but if there's like little hairs perhaps or bits of dust from the scanner um, which happens then I will um, just use the healing brush to kind of get rid of those um, so um, for example actually there's a great example this mushroom if I scan right in you can see that there's like kind of little bits of kind of dust and hair on the scanner so I'll just sort of use <laughs> that to remove them <laughs> but otherwise I um, and that's quite a quick process actually it doesn't take very long um, oh, I like that. Yeah, and then to um, Photoshop. Straighten... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find that so satisfying. Actually, I absolutely love it. And hi to Emma and who else did we have join mm -hmm. us? A few more people. Karina as well. People joining us from different countries. It's amazing. Oh, nice! So exciting. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to point out actually, if you are using watercolor and scanning it in, one thing to be aware of is that watercolor can be quite pale on the page. Um, this is probably my best example here. If you look at this really pale bit, um, when I'm then deleting the background so that I just have the watercolor component, um, occasionally it can kind of take the pale bit with it if it doesn't quite pick up on that. Um, so using the magic wand tool, if I kind of select that, uh, that white background bit, um, here it is actually picking up on it, which is great. If it's really pale, um, sometimes it, it misses on it and misses it out a little bit. Um, so the way you can do that is, A, when you're painting, to kind of be careful that you're trying to kind of create bold lines. But equally, that is a massive eraser. <laughs> to make that a bit smaller. <laughs> um, you can kind of clean up the contours a little bit just to give it a sharper edge. And that means that it's a bit cleaner when you then want to put it against a darker background or um or even a lighter background so don't be afraid to kind of um you know just erase right through to the background behind because we're going to be deleting uh the background anyway um okay. and, Garen and then said what about the texture of the watercolor paper do you work that into the design or paint on a flatter surface so that's a Great really question. good question. Um, yeah, I actually, it is. I was yeah, it's so up. good. It's <laughs> so good. And I, I um, yeah, I mean, I always love painting on really thick. Uh, you can actually pick up on it a little bit here <laughs> where some of the paper's been oh, scanned yeah. in. Um, I like painting on really thick hammered um, Hanamula paper, and that's very textured. And I love it because I feel that the watercolour um, paint just uh, it, it kind of creates its own texture so beautifully when it's on that really thick paper and um, I don't typically incorporate it into the background of the print um, so what I actually do to get rid of that without losing the um, texture on the elements itself is to go to levels and I use this um, highlight eyedropper tool um, and this is already quite a white surface so I don't know how much it will pick up on but typically you sort of oh yeah you can see it's kind of getting rid of it um, this helps to create like a really even white background so that when I highlight the whole thing to delete, it just leaves it really, um, really clean um, so that it doesn't sort of think that the background itself is again like another 
another component really it just sort of sees it as a nice big blank canvas so you'll sort of just kind of click around um Sandrine and... has a tip as well mm. and says she finds that the best way to keep the pale bits is to use the calculation menu and play okay. with and curves and then nice okay and then mask oh yeah, that sounds great bit. okay mm, interesting oh so I would definitely get you on here as well yeah <laughs> yeah I would I would love to learn more about that actually because I uh, as I said you know there's lots of different ways of doing things um, let's just click there. Again, I'm sorry, going to continue to keep merging the layers um, at this stage because we don't really need lots of different layers. Oops, need my eraser. Um, Do I'm you just name your kind of or you, like me, um, you know what? I'm really bad. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't name them. I I did do this when I was first starting off, <laughs> and then I and then I just sort of um, yeah didn't sort of feel like I needed to any longer. Um, but it yeah. is wise. It's start wise. off with good intentions. <laughs> Definitely. That's, yeah, that's the way. Start off with good intentions. <laughs> Don't get into bad habits as you go along. Um, I remember it. Now I'm going... Sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm... I remember at uni, uh, I was working on this piece and it had a thousand layers and everyone was appalled. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, if it has a thousand layers, <laughs> I think I'm normally working somewhere between like maybe 30 and like maybe 150 layers at most so far. So if it was a thousand layers, yeah, that's that's fair. Still a decent um, amount of layers. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so I'll just show you how to delete the background. Um, so we use the magic wand tool. Very simple. Just click on that background, press delete. Um, there's something you can do if you have these kind of in-between spaces as well. You can go to select um, and where is it? Select similar and it will kind of pick up on these interior bits too. The reason I haven't done that with this one is because the fox's face is also white and I don't actually want to lose the fox's face. I was going to so say just... would, that, um, would the fox's face disappear? Yeah that? it kind of it kind of picks up on it as well um, as I was putting together this print yesterday, that's exactly what happened. Um, and so I just, because there aren't that many components, um, it's kind of not too much of a problem to just take the time to to just kind of do them by hand. It doesn't take very long. Um, the other thing that actually you can change is the tolerance. So up here, my tolerance is 20. I find that works quite well for me. Um, but if you feel like it's not picking up enough, um, then you can obviously um, uh, decrease the tolerance and then it will, um, basically blast all of the background <laughs> rather than just select like little bits of it <laughs> um ah, cool. that's great so, so now you've got the individual elements as well so, so, yeah so now we've got those yeah and, yeah and and I'm, like, I'm loving this autom autumnal theme you've got going on thank you I, i'm really feeling uh i'm feeling the chill in the air is, is anyone else yes. feeling it i went for a nice autumnal walk this morning and i thought oh it's turning slightly chilly Did you? Yeah. What, oh, are you looking forward to, what are you looking forward to most about autumn? Uh, question, question for Lizzie and everyone. Ooh, um, I think I think just as you said, those kind of crisp mornings, you know, and the air. I feel like there's this lovely sort of smell in the air in autumn and you get those like gorgeous golden mornings and it's just a bit crispy. And particularly if it's frosty. I love the frost as well. Um, although we don't see very much of that in London. So yeah. Um, I do like I do like a good October frosty morning um, and uh, spiced lattes as well yes oh yeah yeah definitely um yeah I'm I'm your absolute basic girl when it comes to autumn and everything that comes with it so fluffy socks spiced lattes I love it all um uh yeah so what I what I wanted to kind of show people now is how you have all these kind of separate components I'm really curious by the way to hear what other people love about autumn so as and when it as and when people sort of say what they love let me know uh Caroline um, says uh yes chilly here love when the trees oh I've lost it love when the trees turn red and yellow and Tim says and then the summer comes back for a surprise visit in three weeks <laughs> that's true it may well do it may well do an Indian summer isn't it that's what it's called I think oh I um, know, actually yeah and um, I'll let you get back so <laughs> No worries. Yeah, no, so I'm, I'm aware that um, I'm going to I'm going to try and cram quite a bit in. So hopefully, um, hopefully we don't um, run out of time. And um, I just no, wanted to, to sort of say that I'm increasing the canvas size here because what I'm going to do is now actually create the tile. And um, what I've done um, to save us time is I've gone through and I've kind of cleaned up all of the um, all of the elements. So I'm saying I don't do too much because I like to leave the natural bits. And um, I have added a little bit of digital detail 
in places. So for example, with these mushrooms, I added some little white lines and kind of little polka dots to kind of um, just make them stand out a little bit more. I love a cute little mushroom. Um, it is adorable. <laughs> Most thank adorable you. Mushrooms. I know, I, I really into mushrooms at the moment. Um, I don't know if it's because I've been spending time in the Czech Republic and like they're really into their mushrooms over there. <laughs> they do a lot Can of foraging for them. A really amazingly terrible <laughs> mushroom joke yeah. from Gareth. He says, I'm Please a summer do. baby, don't mind autumn, but I don't have mushroom for winter in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gareth. I love it. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll store that one away and steal it, I think, for my own use at some time. You'll probably see that crop up on my Instagram at some point. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to separate out the components so that they're all individual pieces. And the way that I do that is just use the Lasso tool um, and then I just uh, control X, um, paste it back again. Um, and that means that rather than them all sort of being carried around as one, you know, group together, I can uh, arrange them individually. Um, but now what I'm going to do actually is create a new layer. Um, and I'm going to create the tile, so I'm just going to move that to the bottom beneath the other components. And to do that, I use this tool here, uh, the rectangular marquee tool. And it just doesn't really actually need to be a perfect square. It can be if you if you like sort of um, nice, perfect uh, whole things, um, then you can adjust it to your heart's content. But this for me is kind of fine. And then I'm just going to fill that with, um, I normally use white just because it's nice and clean, but really you can use kind of any any color. Um, and that there is actually going to be our tile that we're going to create the repeat on. Um, and so um, I think, did I do that? Yes, I did. Great. Um, so at this point, I just go through, I um, cut out each and every um, element just to make sure that it's like a separate layer. Um, so that it's all ready to then come onto the tile and uh, to do the exciting part, which is to actually create the pattern itself. Um, so I'm feeling very Blue Peter at the moment because <laughs> I created oh, this one I'm yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did earlier. yeah, I know. I mean, it's uh, otherwise otherwise I would I would be forcing you guys to sit here for like a good hour and a bit. I think also. <laughs> We were just very ahead. ambitious. We wanted to fit in as much as possible and then thought, hmm, <laughs> we <do. laughs> is this going to fit into an hour? Yeah, I think you can. I think you can. I'm I'm prepared. I'm going to I'm going to keep on whizzing through. But as I said, like if anyone does have questions or something's not clear, like please do, please do shout. Um, yes. So and also what? about um, freelance life as well, because uh, hmm. Lizzie, how long have you been freelance for now? Full time. Ooh, so I've been freelancing full time since the beginning of April. Um, and so that was, uh, I mean, I freelanced actually beforehand for about a year, also working in print design. Um, and then for about 18 months, I worked for um, the company actually where I met Hazel, uh, which was a really great experience too. And I learned a lot. Um, but yeah, I really longed to kind of actually, I was making a lot of content about creatives and I wanted to be the creative myself because um, I think that's where, where I feel like really fulfilled. Um, so yeah, I've gone back into print design and I'm absolutely loving it. And she's smashing it and um, she uh, daily there is new work every single day her work ethic is incredible you should uh, yeah check her out on Instagram oh thank you did we pick up a good Instagram handle I can't remember um oh yeah it'll it'll be I think Tim Tim wrote it down oh, yes Tim wrote, yeah 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 good old Tim um, yeah and I have said, to say I picked up, picked up a lot of good <laughs> I, I picked up that. a lot of a lot of tips from Hazel along the way, actually. I think you definitely encouraged me with all of your amazing work ethic um, kind of behaviours and good tips and so on. <laughs> um, Thank you. Very appreciated. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to show people very quickly, in case you're wondering why on earth I've lined things up along this top edge. Um, so along the, the top edge and the left edge are where we're going to arrange our components. So I'm not going to put them along the bottom or the right edge. And I started doing that here, as you can see. Um, my sort of tips for like doing this well are to imagine that everything in this tile is going to be repeated. So this box is going to be over here. This box is going to be down here. Um, so sort of I like, keep that in mind. And I, I tend to position the larger components first, just because I think they're the ones that really stand out when you look at a pattern as a whole. Um, the ones that kind of leap off the leap off the, the wallpaper or the fabric or whatever it is that you're designing this for. So I tend to position those and then I like to fill them in with kind of little bits in between. Um, so I'm going to 
I'll just kind of keep doing this. If you guys kind of watch, um, and I put them on the edge because we're going to kind of essentially cut everything along these edges and along this top edge, and we're going to move it down to these edges here so that we kind of have um, the edges of the tile sorted so that then there's a kind of a smooth repeat, and then we'll kind of fill the fill the center. Um, so with this, it reminds um, me of uh, yeah. tessellating. Did you ever do that? Uh, Ooh. That lesson where you kind of take a square and then whatever you take out of the top bit, you add to mm -hmm. the bottom bit. So then um, when you put the tiles together, oh. they'll all um, merge shapes. Oh, interesting. I don't think I actually ever did do that. Was that in like a maths lesson that you did it? I can't remember whether it was maths or art. It kind of crosses the two. I think it was probably okay. about uh, yeah. es Escher. I think it was a session on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do remember, I do remember Escher um, and everyone doing these kind of quite... Um, I think like maybe sort of around GCC art and everyone had a page where you're doing something that's kind of quite Escher-esque and um, quite, had quite a few tricky. pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say one, one tip actually that I have that I've learned along the way is to kind of copy and paste these as you go along so that you have a set of the elements along mm -hmm. the side that you can kind of draw from. Um, and the other thing is to um, don't be afraid to kind of transform them. So with Control T, you can do quite a lot. Actually, you can rotate, you can kind of uh, flip it. I'm, you know, I'm not going to do it with this mushroom because so it's going to look exactly the same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's let's transform the fox. Um, so yeah, I can kind of flip it, or I can change the scales. So I can go kind of um, bigger if I want. I can sort of a um, huge fox, a little bit, a really big fox. Yeah. Um, this Alpha is, I was fox. saying to Hazel yesterday, this is in homage to all the Hackney foxes because we're both, we're both Hackney girls, aren't we? And there's lots of foxes around this neck of the woods. There are. They make some interesting noise, noises. I don't know if you've ever heard a fox at night. Uh, they're quite sort of like odd, they're aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sandrine's coming up with all the tips today as well. She says there's a fantastic Ooh. tool mm -hmm. in, uh, oh, I don't know whether we should mention it, in Corel Draw. Sorry, Adobe. Mm -hmm where you could draw on one side and it automatically repeats on the other side. Oh, that is cool, oh, actually. That would be useful. I, I, I remember like watching a surface pattern designer once who kind of filled out everything in the middle too at the same time. But I have to say, I find it much easier to actually copy the edges first because then you can kind of play around in the middle without worrying, okay, I want to put this thing here, but I know there's going to be a big fox's tail, but I can't sort of exactly see where it's going to be. So um, it's a lot um, done kind of by your own judgment and just playing around. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is a bit where I can I can easily spend a couple of hours uh, on something like this. It's, you know, with, with kind of pieces <laughs> which are overlapping, like if you've got kind of vines or like floral stems or something or lots of leaves or foliage, then um, it can take a lot longer just to play around with. It's really satisfying, but it just does take some time. Um, but with something like this, I think it's actually kind of the fun part because you get to arrange all of the components. Um, um, but then what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to move these guys over here um, and I'm going to create, um, so I've actually put these guys into this group already. So the way that you do that is, um, I imagine you guys might know this already, is just to kind of highlight the top layer, scroll down to the bottom one, press shift, and then it selects them all, and then I can just put them nice and tidily into a group. Um, and then the reason I do that is because I actually duplicate the group just so that I have a backup copy um, of all of the um, components here because I'm going to actually merge these so that I can then tidily um, move things across to the uh, to the other side. Um, I should say actually don't put anything on the corners, try to avoid the corners, just uh, just the, the uh, edges on the top oh. and the left because if it's on the corner it kind of can get a little bit complicated. Um, so um, yeah yeah so once so I, I just found that that serves me really well and um, okay. obviously it's all a kind of trial and error and working out your best process but this has worked really well for me i trust you um, the queen yeah. of print i'm Thank gonna you. call you the queen of print from now on i love that i'm gonna steal <laughs> that steal that that sounds great um, <laughs> um and then i'm going to actually hide that copy because i don't need it um and with these i'm just going to delete them because now i have the um now i have the, the copied ones which have all of these separate elements and what I'm going to do with this group is I'm now going to merge it so that everything here becomes one nice tidy layer. 
And that means um, that I can now take the marquee tool and I can begin to move it down. Um, so you'll notice that with all of these separate components, I haven't actually merged them with the background tile. And the reason that I don't do that is because um, it's just quite nice to then have the flexibility to go back once I've copied these to the edges um, and adjust the tile if, if, the, if it's not completely aligned. Um, most of the time it is, but I think it's good to just um, save yourself the hassle of having to go backwards lots of steps um, if that's the case. So what I'll do here now is I'll get that marquee tool, give myself lots and of room. Train has uh, written you a poem. Has she? Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. She to... is the queen of print. Colouring all in tangerine. Oh, oh, queen of print, acing it in the Adobe stream. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to need a signed copy of that, Sandrine. Um, <laughs> that oh, would be Jackie, great. Um, what a throwback. She says her first published illustrations were drawn in paint. <gasps> they would have been yeah. better just scanned in. Paint is in the, oh, the tool. Oh, we, all, we all remember paint, though. Is it still going? Do people brush. see things? I think it came back. Yeah. I thought it died. Really? I think it came okay. back. Oh, I mean, I remember. I remember actually, funnily enough, being in like reception when I was about five or something, and absolutely stubbornly refusing to use the full like what's it called, like the the paint bucket tool to colour in a background. The teacher going nuts because I was just doing it with a very little paintbrush. <laughs> I still, I still like, remember this conversation clearly. <laughs> um, so now that I've used this uh, rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to press down shift. And this is really helpful before I move it at all, because that means that instead of it going all over the shop, um, it will um, just be automatically aligned. Like I can move my mouse around <gasps> and it's not going to shift. So that's really handy. And then just it's lining magic. up, you can you can see I'm like peering at my screen because I always like look closely at it to make sure it's um, good. Um, so I'm just going to drop that there, take off shift, and then I'm going to zoom in. And this is where, um, feel free to like really zoom in on this stage actually, because it helps to be as accurate as possible. I'll press shift again, and then I'm just going to lower it so that it's exactly aligned. Can you see that pink line that's kind of appeared? That yes, shows that it's can. aligned exactly with the um, with the edge. And so now I've kind of got those uh, that top and bottom edge sorted, and I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to do exactly the same now to this um, left edge. Um, I guess you could, in theory, actually do it on the other sides too. I just uh, learned to do it with the uh, the top and the left side. And um, so again, I'm pressing Shift just to make sure it goes across nice and neatly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna oh, see I'm seeing it come together already. Yeah, this is really exciting, actually. I love this part. Um, and then I, I like the part where I get to kind of put them all in. Ooh. And Robert is here. So, he says, sorry, I'm late. Forgot okay. my mask. Wouldn't let me on the bus. Well, Robert, oh, no. teaching you how to design your own face masks at the moment. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, <you> <laughs> never be late again. <laughs> there we go. Um, and so, yeah, so there, there are your kind of edges sorted. And now what you can do is um, get these components back and then I just go through again, I kind of um, lasso them uh, if I need to kind of free them up again. Um, and then I can just arrange them as I kind of uh, wish. So this bit does take quite long and I'm aware that I don't want to hold you guys <laughs> for too it long. Well, um, <laughs> right. OK, so here we go. I'll show you very quickly. This is what the finished tile looks like. It's one I made so earlier. I've <laughs> well, <I made> earlier. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, presto. Um, so this is the finished tile. Again, I've not yet um, secured it to the um, to the actual tile behind. Oh, there we go. Let's not move that. So I'm now going to um, merge uh, all of these um, layers together. So that's now one nice um, kind of pattern like that. And then um, I should say with the tile as well, you can test this out in different colors. Um, so let's say, um, I don't know, I want to kind of see it in a blue. I like to kind of pick up on colors using this um, highlight uh, dropper tool um, to just sort of pick out colors that are in the print anyway, and then kind of play around with those to kind of see if they work. So Ooh. I think this would look quite pretty with like a pale pink actually. So I'm going to go with one here and go kind of quite a bit lighter. Jane um, says, wow. And Jackie says, do you always do it by sight? Um, I do actually in that like I I think I really love working with colour and I like kind of that intuitive process of just sort of seeing 
what I think works best. Um, obviously, it depends. If you're working to a brief, then you'll be working to like particular color schemes, or you might have like um, a brief that comes with various hex codes. You know, the colors that you'll need to use. Um, but if I'm just designing one for me that I'm going to use across my own products, then um, then yeah, I like to kind of just play around really freely. Um, and then you still got this, which is yeah, I think the pink is quite pretty. I think I'll I think I'll keep that because um, it's it's a it's a nice sort of soft pink. Um, and this one I, I hide most of the time because I don't need it. But the reason I keep it there is just because it's really helpful if I um, if I just want to kind of go back and repeat a stage. It's just a sort of good backup system. Um, so now I will actually um, merge these two together. Um, actually, what I do really quickly is I just scoot around every edge. Um, I think I've already done it on this tile, so it's all perfectly aligned. But just to show you what I mean, sometimes, um, you know, the tile, oh, sorry, sometimes, I forgot it, just on the one, there we go. Sometimes the tile might be sort of out by like a little bit or even, or even just a tiny bit, but even that will kind of mess up the smooth tile repeat. Um, so then I just make sure that it's kind of perfectly aligned and I check that all the way around. Um, before I then go and merge these two. Uh, so Jackie says, uh, do you do the lining up the pattern at the edges by eye? Um, you don't kind of really need to do it uh, sort of yes and no. So with the kind of pink line that appears, that's really helpful. And that's Photoshop telling me that it's perfectly aligned. Um, there's this sort of um, almost like pink contour that appears like this very thin pink line. Um, otherwise, you've also kind of got these, um, you know, the grid background actually really helps as well, just to make sure it's if I were doing it against a sort of a plain colored background, I think it'd be a bit harder, but this helps me um, do it really visually. So so yeah, that bit I do, I guess, do by eye. Um, and then quite excitingly, you then have your tile. So then you can test it by copying and uh, pasting the tile um and kind of just doing it around every ooh, every edge i'm just gonna zoom out because that one is not perfectly aligned yet there we go kirsty says that adobe capture is go. now built into photoshop i did not know that and i'm not going to show that because i did not know that so thank you kirsty <laughs> i'm always learning every day there we go. yeah um, this actually, community is so good um yeah. <laughs> they're full of tips and tricks and yeah yes no that's a that's great i can't wait to um i'm really excited actually to learn about fresco because that's not something that i I've, I've used yet and I've, I've heard so much about it from hazel so you're going that's to gonna be really it. cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i can tell it's going to be really fun um so then i go through and i just kind of crop it actually that's one tool i think it helps it kind of align better when i'm then testing it we're really coming into land so don't worry we have uh we have um, right. Take time. your time. My little bits aren't going to take very long, so we're, we're good. Oh well, we're pretty much that. I mean, I, I hope this was. I hope this was kind of relatively clear, just to give an idea of my own process. Um, as I said, kind of, mm, I'm definitely. sure that every print designer has their own, um, and it seems counterintuitive, but um, for some reason, this really helps to align. So now I just open back out again the uh, the artboard using the crop tool very easy and Robert says, this is a bit unusual for me but this inspires me to make my own wrapping paper oh my god yes, I want to make yes, my own wrapping absolutely paper absolutely do yeah I make my own wrapping paper um and it is the most satisfying thing ever I think sometimes you'll notice on photoshop these very 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 fine lines and I'll show you the way to test to see whether that's actually a problem or not um so let me just quickly fill in these corners doop, doop, doop. There you go. Um, yeah, and it's honestly, it's the most wonderful, satisfying thing to create your own print and then to actually see it in real life uh, on wrapping paper or, or cards or fabric. Um, and there's so many places where you can kind of print these, um, particularly if you just sort of need some for yourself, you know, if you're not looking, if you don't need to like print on mass for, um, for people. So the way you can kind of see this problem is, um, can you see how that line disappears when you zoom in? So I'll show you that again. So if you zoom out, there's occasionally a little um, a little break. Oh, and then I when I mean. zoom yes. in, yeah, it completely disappears. And I noticed that then when I'm printing this uh, or I'm um, 
uh, there are a couple of companies where I provide the prints and they check to see whether the repeat works and um, and it always does. It's kind of completely fine, which is great. Um, and then the fun part is you can expand your artboard and then you see, whoa, this like big print has appeared. And that's really satisfying, <gasps> fun oh. moment. I love this bit. Um, oh. Yeah. This and so there you, there you have it. Um, and then that's kind of just fun. You can obviously kind of save that as a JPEG. Um, oh, it's taking its time to... Uh, there we go. Um, uh, you know, just so that you can kind of um, have that as a as a version of kind of the the print repeat kind of in action, if you like. Um, but yeah, don't forget to kind of actually save the tile by itself, um, just solo, so that um, again you can then upload that um, for your own use. So I, I recommend saving it as a JPEG, a TIFF, and as a PSD file, so that um, you can kind of go and edit. Um, as and when you need and that you have it for different reasons. So for example, if I'm posting on Instagram, I'm going to export it as quite a low res JPEG. Um, but equally, if I then um, want to send it off for printing on fabric, then I'll probably use um, a, a TIFF tile, a, a TIFF file. Which cover is, all your um, bases. <laughs> cover all your bases. Yeah, exactly. To make sure that it's at the right resolution. Um, I did want to say, actually, when I scan things in, I tend to scan them in at 600 DPI, which seems very, very high because most printers will actually require it in just 300 DPI. Um, but the reason I do 600 is because it allows me much more flexibility with the scale so that when I'm playing around, I can make it much larger, larger I can make it as small as I want as well. Um, and then that just gives it much more flexibility. Um, so the very last thing, the very, very last thing is that I did some <laughs> mock-ups <laughs> to show what this actually um, ah. looks like. <gasps> once you then place it on uh, things so here we've got all a of mask them. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is again really fun i love doing mock-ups once i've actually got a print because then you kind of get to sort of imagine what it looks like in real life and that again is kind of really fun um and you could play around with different scales as well so here i've just kind of whacked it on fabric that you might use for, for a tote bag um you can says, see what it looks like oh i'm so glad you like the Kirsty. <laughs> And Caroline, like, enjoy um, enjoy your hair haircut. Um, so she's going to catch it on replay. We'll see you later. Have oh, good great! Weekend. I hope the haircut goes well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of the that's sort of my my approach to creating a simple pattern with kind of separate elements. Um, and yeah, I hope that was I hope that was interesting. I hope it was clear as well. So inspiring as well. Yeah, good. I loved it. Good. All right, are you ready to see fresco? I am. Okay, I am indeed. Uh, yeah. Right, we're going to try and do the so handover excited. now. So I'm going to share my screen. So let me. S there we go. Continue, and then I am just going to press this. Mm -hmm. You can see all the wonderful wires that I have in the background. Always waging war against wires, and now I now I can look at you guys. So. Screen mirroring. And all right, can you see my screen? I can. Yes, can you I see can. It? Mm -hmm. ah, perfect. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to quickly go over um, a few things in Fresco and why you might start your pattern design in Fresco rather than Photoshop. And this is really exciting because Lizzie has never seen Fresco before. So no. I'm going to introduce you to all the different brushes which you are going to love as a traditional painter and. Oh, Gareth did ask a good question for you, Lizzie, if you know. Uh, is there a good mock-up software uh, or websites so you can see how a logo or pattern would look on an item? Yes. So um, the answer to that is that there are a couple of really good marketplaces for mock-ups. Um, they're not free necessarily. They're also not very expensive. Um, it really depends kind of what license you need. So if it's just for yourself, then, um, for example, if you wanted to um, go on to like creative markets, actually, that's a really good website, creative market um, to look for uh, different kind of mockups. You can look up for anything from, uh, I don't know, from packaging, different kinds of packaging to paper to fabric, whatever really it is that you're interested in, masks. Um, and then you can um, wow. purchase the personal license to use that. Um, if you're looking to actually sell, then you would need to purchase the commercial license which is normally a little bit more expensive um the other thing that you can do is also just search for free mock-ups so there are some of them out there they don't tend to i find be as good quality but like again they kind of work and they give you an idea of what your um 
what your design will actually look like. So I think, yeah, first first step is probably to Google, you know, um, free mask mock-up, for example, um, and see um, see what comes up. But we've I got a few go suggestions market. in the chat actually. Uh, one that's called FDR Free Design Resources. <gasps> oh. Uh, how should I show you my whole screen? Is that better? Can you? Yeah, hi, everybody in the chat. My... Tim here. Um, I'm talking to mm -hmm. Hazel at the moment because it looks like we can't see her entire desk, uh, screen share. So perhaps. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you can just try re uh, sharing again to see if that works. Hi, right, Gareth. Stop the share and I'm yes. going to start it again. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Bear with us, everybody. This is all the tech, all the tech. Mm -hmm. It's looking good, this though. I love the look of those planets. About. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, so sometimes I'll the tech explain what I'm going to do. Yep, there we go. Yep. Perfect. Okay. We're good. Everyone can see my screen. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show you the oil painting brushes. So if you want to start off with uh, your motif creation, um, you can do it in Photoshop with your brushes. So this is for digital illustration. Um, or I would prefer to start in fresco just because of the quality of these brushes. So Lizzie and everyone, I don't know whether you can, can see mm -hmm. these are oil brushes. Um, oh, it's gorgeous. I'm just going to redraw the sun because I'm really happy with how that came out. Um, and I'll show you how much um, it can blend as well. Oh, wow. So this is a, if you want to kind of keep that, that painterly feel, but if you want to do it digitally, uh, this is why I would recommend frescoes. This is, um, yeah, one of the reasons. There are many reasons. Oh, it looks so buttery, like the texture looks wonderful. Thank you. I'll show you the watercolour ones briefly as well. Um, just going to add a bit more, a bit more red, I think. Just check the, the chat as well. Thank you, Kirsty. Wow, I'm looking good, she said. Uh, and then I'm actually just going to go into my favorites. So you can favorite brushes as well in, uh, in mm. Fresco. And Kyle, the god of all brushes, uh, he's created a concept pack. Actually, I'm going to do that on a new layer. And I'm just going to add this texture. It's, I think it's called cork bubbles or something. So I'm just mm. going to add that over the top to give it a little bit of a... A sun texture. There we go. Oh, lovely. Uh, so has anyone else tried fresco? Or are you more Photoshop or Illustrator? I have to say Illustrator is not my favorite program, but some people love it. So let me know. Let me know in the chat. Um, and what's your what would you say is your kind of um other than other than fresco uh, as a brand new program what's your your kind of favorite program in which to illustrate oh um yeah definitely photoshop so i did photoshop uh since uni actually mm -hmm. uh and then i think it was last year fresco came out and i was introduced to it and i thought oh there's no going back now once you yeah. once you start using these watercolor brushes mm -hmm. And oil brushes, you're, you're going to find it hard to go yeah. back because it feels, it almost feels like you're using um, oil brushes mm -hmm. as well, and just the way they blend with the paint that's already, already there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gareth says, "Oh, he's illustrator for static image." Mm -hmm. I'm good, good on you, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to you have to teach me, teach me sometime, mm. or. Or do a tutorial, maybe. Um, okay, I love so the kind of celestial gonna be, theme. That's going to be my son. So that I just wanted to show you how to create um, a motif using the fresco brushes. So that would be uh, my main reason for using fresco. But another really cool feature is 
Let me just minimize that. Are the vector brushes. Um, and <sighs> Illustrator is really great for working with vectors. And that was always an aspect that I thought, ah, oh, if only I could work with vectors, it'd be so much easier when a client wants um, sort of something that you can scale really small and then something you can scale really big and it would just be a lot more versatile. Uh, so Fresco has these uh, vector brushes and I just created this little motif. So it's just the move tool um, from Adobe, uh, from Adobe Photoshop. Uh, which I thought actually that would be a really good little motif uh, just to make a pattern. So I'll just quickly show you how the vector looks. Yeah, Gareth says Fresco seems to offer more hands-on with vectors than Illustrator it can be somewhat mechanical. Yeah, I agree, Gareth. And because uh, I don't quite get on with Illustrator software and much more from a Photoshop background, uh, Fresco feels like, um, it feels very much like the same uh, interface, I think that's the word, of Photoshop. So if you're from that background but you want to use vectors and you're into kind of drawing, this is the one. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can really draw with these vectors. Actually, I'll do that on a new layer. Mm -hmm. I'm just double tapping um, to delete. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm just going to do that and I'll just show you, even though I drew it, you can just um, zoom in and uh, don't lose clarity at all. It's all, mm. all done with mathematical equations so you don't um, lose that pixelation, uh, lose, the, lose the quality, sorry, you don't get pixelated. Mm -hmm. And Emma said, are you tempted, Lizzie, to use Fresco? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's just I'm sort of just taking in the um, just taking in the interface here and all of the um, the kind of brushes. It looks very exciting. Um, yeah, I love the texture. Know, like the texture looks anything. wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I loved looking at the the different oil brushes that you were using when you were working on the the sun a moment ago as well. Oh, look at that! That's clever. Wow. Ah, uh, so this is going to be good for. Uh, um, yeah, the reason I fancied doing the move tool is because I thought, oh, it would make a great pattern. And I was right, because when I put them together, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Here's one I did earlier, everyone. And so this is just uh, the Adobe move tool as a pattern. Doesn't it look great? great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, but this no, was but I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Lizzie. I was going to say, I think that's actually quite fun that you would do. I, I, I think the untrained eye, uh, even me, if I looked at that initially as a pattern, I wouldn't sort of think that was the Adobe Move tool. But when you move in, you could see that working really well on like an upholstery fabric and like a lovely colour. Thanks, so too. So. Um, and also, I thought it'd be funny to have that on a, on a face mask because you're essentially saying to people, move out the way. <laughs> it's a little bad joke there, but... <laughs> Get out of the way. Uh, oh, Gareth says quite Moroccan in style. Mm. Is that to me? Is that to me, Gareth? <laughs> and yeah, Emma says, here's one I did earlier. I need this magic in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what else did I want to tell you about these? Oh, yes. So what I would normally do is... I would create these motifs in Fresco uh, just because I really like that uh, drawing abilities you can have. So you can work with vectors and you can work with the paintbrush, the paintbrushes uh, to give you really nice effects like oh, mm. the sun I did earlier looks much better than what I just did now. Um, and then I would just export it to Photoshop, but you can also export it, um, I'll show you. Can export it as a pdf to illustrator if you prefer that um, but i would export it as a psd uh, to photoshop and then i'd probably do something similar to um what you did lizzie and create a tile or just place it all by hand uh, i'm quite a manual a manual person i think there's something kind of really lovely though about doing that that placing by whether it's kind of as you say sort of painting um I was about to say painting by hand, but sort of on, on fresco, but then actually um, creating the tile and sort of placing the components together and really giving it that like sort of human eye um, 
sort of quality. I mean, you, you do have to kind of play around with, I think, getting the spacing right and so on. It's quite hard to get it perfect from the get go, but um, it's looking great. I was going to say, can I see more of the watercolor brushes? I would. Oh, we're on the same level. I was just about to show you because I couldn't leave <laughs> Fresco without showing these. So sorry to anyone who's seen them before. Actually, no, not sorry because they're a treat. I will show you again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what colors look nice together? Let's start with an orange. Um, so this is just, uh, I'm just going to paint like this. And if you notice, mm -hmm. the colors bleed. So you can oh, add, nice. add more. Uh, and the pressure you add um, affects how intense the color is. Uh, so it's very much like watercolor in that you can also mm -hmm. get the kind of the effect of the water seeping into the color. Mm. And, oh, <laughs> we don't, we don't apologize on brushes over here. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I think it looks so great for kind of big, beautiful, soft spaces of color as well. Oh, it's so satisfying to watch. It's so satisfying. Next time you're around here, you're gonna have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have to. <laughs> I'll leave with the yeah. iPad. I'll be like, <laughs> Hazel, I'm here to see you and the iPad. Yeah. <laughs> And I think Tim earlier in the chat said uh, that Fresco is now available for Windows desktop as well. Did he say which version? Oh, really? I think he did. On more Windows 10 devices. Uh, so that's nice. very exciting. Oh, there he goes, Windows 10. That is exciting. Uh, yeah, I... Also, you can sort of adjust the water flow. You can adjust the amount of paint. Uh, so that's... A lot more oh, intense wow. there and it's just beautiful so lizzie i think you're gonna love this because as a traditional painter as well so i used to be a traditional painter um mm -hmm. this just feels really yeah. natural and authentic and you can delete the whole layer which which is a quality i like yeah <laughs> oh and then you can dry mm -hmm. the layer as well i don't know whether you can see here um but there's right at the bottom there's a dry layer tool so you don't have to mm -hmm. wait mm -hmm. 24 hours for it to dry and then you can just uh, start again and you'll notice the colour is not merging with the one underneath. That's helpful. Yeah, great. <laughs> and I love that you can get that sort of beautiful rich pigment as well because I think a lot of people assume that watercolour is often very pale and kind of, you know, gentle colours. But actually watercolour pigment can be really bold and rich and that's definitely coming across here as well. But you also have that variety so you can get definitely. the beautiful kind of pale pale area as well definitely so you can do something really pale Ooh, or something really spread. vibrant <laughs> mm -hmm. gareth says oh i want fresco now for the watercolor bleed it's so clever can photoshop do this um as far as i'm aware no i don't I think so these brushes are specifically for fresco so it's designed for painters like like me and lizzie yeah I'm gradually trying to convert everyone. I'll be coming right round to try yeah. this out. This looks great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely the way it is. <laughs> Everyone's mm -hmm. loving it. Yeah. And yeah, isn't the dry layer um, a brilliant feature, Robert was saying. Okay. Oh, we're actually very much on time. I thought we were going to be cramming um, so much into this hour, but we've still got seven minutes. So does anyone have any last questions as well? And I am going to switch to Adobe Capture for the last seven minutes everyone wants to buy an ipad pro <laughs> oh no actually gareth wants someone to buy him an ipad pro perhaps we could send up set up a fundraiser but <laughs> that's, that's a good distinguishment <laughs> uh, so i just wanted to show you quickly two things in adobe capture uh, because i was going to focus on the initial motif creation side of it lizzie did such an excellent job in photoshop of creating the tile uh, da, da, da. So I'm just gonna. Oh, Adobe Capture dis disappeared. Here we go. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you is actually how to create your own brush, and that might um, give a little inspiration um, into how to just take something from your environment, or you can draw it um, from your page and scan it in. So I'm just going to click on the camera 
Oh, wrong pattern. So there we go. I'm going to click on brushes. Mm -hmm. And so these are just some lipstick kisses that I did a little bit earlier. <laughs> and I'm just going to hover over it. I'm going to tap to freeze. Uh, and then just at the side, I'm going to edit the exposure a little bit. This is so simple um, to do. So I thought I'd just show you quickly. Mm, and that looks... That's good. And I'm going to press tick. Da, da, da. Oh, no, I'm going to go back and edit the exposure a bit more. And then... Um, no, I'm going to edit it a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. So is this like a sort of alternative to scanning? So instead of having to scan something in, you can you can capture it just using the, the Adobe app. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I've just noticed it's really useful for, I guess it is kind of acting like a scanner and then you can create your own brushes. Um, so if you notice, I've just honed, I've just cropped that. So it's just one of the kisses and then you can pick different styles. So I'm just going to pick this kind of stamp looking one. Oh, how fun. Ah, oh, Oliver says that's Adobe scan. Adobe has so so many different things <laughs> and you can edit all the settings but I'm going to keep them as the default and then I think everything's good and so I'm just going to press save and then it's going to save to my library <laughs> oh that's a preview of it and then I'm just going to click on the three dots here and export as ABR so that's your brush. And then just copy to Adobe Fresco, going back to Fresco. And so that should have now saved into my library. I think I called it brush two, didn't I? And so even though it's the black and, um, black and white, that is now a brush. Oh, wow. Uh, so that is just a really nifty nifty trick into how to create your own brushes oh that is really fun you could yeah, do so many Adobe things capture. That. yeah and i thought oh that would just be such a great idea to you know start creating your print and you can you've already got a motif created um, mm. and oh still more people coming in to the chat hello mm. hello we've got three minutes left but um hello <laughs> <laughs> coming to join just for the, just for adobe capture uh oh karina says capture is also very helpful to import colors from images into the library in fresco yes there is a feature where you can um select uh colors as well so you could let me just take oh sorry everyone you're having a look at this so you can um, select different things. So you'll notice it can pick up color schemes. You can create your own color schemes um, by taking a photo, uh, which I think is incredible. And actually, that's how I uh, that's how I create my own color schemes sometimes um, through doing that. So I'm just going to show you one last thing, and it's how to do a pattern. I've got two minutes, and that should all that should be all it takes. I'm just going to go on to pattern. And what should I take? What should I use for a pattern? Oh, I mean, I've got one. I'm, I've got a face mask already, although that is already a pattern. So let's. All right, let's just use my table. <laughs> uh, so you'll notice that little triangle is looking over, mm, and that will be what creates the pattern. Mm. Okay, no, let's do this. That's quite cool. Uh, so I've saved this now. <laughs> Emma says, "No rush. <laughs> let's cr let's crush today's live stream. We will. We will." Uh, so I'm just gonna save this. I'm just gonna save it. It's pattern four. And Gareth says we can run over. We normally do. Oh. Should I, should I give them that review? Hang on, I'll do, I'll do that later. Sorry. It'll be me and Sorry, <laughs> <we don't. laughs> They're like, cut, uh, cut yes, the Yes, I will make the brushes as well. 
<laughs> and then we're just going to export as a pattern tile. You'll notice the theme of class is pattern. <laughs> and we're just going to copy to Photoshop. So we're going back to Photoshop. We've done a full circle. <laughs> yeah. And now it's opened up. You can see the tile. Uh, so I'm just going to select the tile and just shrink it a little bit. Copy, paste, and move it around. And you'll notice we've already got this perfect tile that Adobe Capture has set up for us. Ah, oh, I love that we've inspired everyone to have a play in Fresco. Yes, definitely do it. Definitely, I can't and wait. And let us know what I you think. It it's going to be fun. This is so satisfying, this part as well, where you see the print um, kind of come together en masse. Like, this always gives me a bit of a thrill. <sighs> me too. Me too. But yeah, there's are just a couple of features of Adobe Capture. There are so many others, but I thought I'd just show you those as we were doing patterns. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for joining today. And um, thank you, Lizzie, as well. Um, yeah, my absolute that was pleasure. Thank you. Such a beautiful pattern you created. Um, oh, thank you, Robert. Good show. So inspiring. Lovely. Good. Really yeah, happy I to hope, hear. I hope everyone... everyone up to for the weekend as well. Because it's Friday. We, I don't usually do the Friday streams. Has anyone got any plans, Lizzie? What are you up to this week? Oh, what am I up to this? Um, I think I actually have a relatively free weekend, which is actually my kind of perfect weekend where you don't have to be anywhere. You know, you can just sort of potter. Um, so I might do some painting, actually. And <gasps> yes, cooking. Oh, you know what boxes. I am doing? Yeah, I'm making a, I'm making a steak and uh, ale pie. That's ah. my that's my plan for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rock and roll, Tasty rock and things. roll. Tasty things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gareth is drinking, yeah. drinking over the weekend. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so I hope everyone uh, enjoyed today's stream on pattern and hopefully um, yeah. there's some inspiration there for you to create your own pattern. And then hopefully, uh, well, I think we're going to try and get our fabrics printed or designs printed onto fabric and maybe have a go at making a face mask. Mm, so that would be really fun. At some point we might do a face mask tutorial if there's any interest for it, like actually making the the fabric version of it. Yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, Tim says he hopes Gareth is drinking lots of water at the weekend. Oh, and Jane's doing some collaging. That's lovely. Oh, interesting. What's he, what will you be collaging out, uh, out of? <laughs> I used to love collaging out of like interior magazines when I was when I was little like and actually now I should go back into that it's really satisfying to kind of cut these wonderful textures out and use them actually as a pattern inspiration there's so much that you can find in in kind of the world around you whether it's in a magazine or just actually on a walk through the park there's a lot a lot to inspire they could do some foraging for pattern design ideas oh yeah that would be cool oh. <laughs> well thank you so much everyone and don't forget the conversation continues on discord and remember to tune in every day mm -hmm. from 12 uh, to see what other creatives mm -hmm. have to offer so thank you everyone and have a great weekend lovely to chat with you and lovely to create with you lizzie yes you too you too thank you for showing me fresco thank you no problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everyone.